In today's show, we're looking ahead to Sunday's action and who we can stream in on a five-game day. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball is proudly brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family from the community can come together. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. And I'm also loving the fact that you choose Locked On Fantasy Basketball to make your make it your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Make sure you are checking out your favorite team's Locked On show as well. Let's talk, talk uh, Sunday's games. Only five games on. Pretty low volume day, of course, across the NBA on uh, this Sunday. We've got streamers for category leagues, deeper leagues, points leagues, and what we're watching for in these contests. The first game up is the Kings and the Mavericks. This is an early game, so just be aware of that when setting your lineups. Of course, what we want to watch is the pencil. Harrison Barnes. Barnesy! He's been on fire to start the season. It is going to cool off, I assure you. But there is a chance this is his best season ever. Last year was his best season ever. Maybe he gets better because he's taking a lot more threes. He's hitting everything at an astonishing rate. His usage is high. He's been great. But I do expect a level of cool-off. And I also want to watch Davion Mitchell. So many people are holding this guy in 12-team leagues. There's no need for it. He's their fourth guard. Again, he might get 25, 26 minutes. He's not a top 200 player so far. He's a nice steel streamer. And if you are looking for someone to stream, like he's an option for sure. For Sunday, with so few games on, you're looking for some steals. He had that one big scoring game, but everything else has been pretty rough. But he is an option, at least, for this day. Let's see how he goes. I'm really impressed with his defense on court. It's been great. No one had any... Well, that's not true. I had a few doubts about that because of his size. But he's been great. It's just everything else that's not really there. For the Mavericks, can they score more than 75 points in a game? Shout out to the worst coach in the NBA, Jason Kidd. Um, They were dreadful in the last game. Their offense is disgusting. Um, The fact that you've got Luka Doncic and you have a horrible offense... And some of it's on the front office as well. But... That offense is disgusting. Tim Hardaway Jr., he's moving more towards being a specialist streamer, like a Joe Harris, Duncan Robinson type, although he does score more than those guys. But he's not doing anything really important at the moment, is he? He's been pretty useless for the majority of the time. I think he could have a good game, but I'm moving towards him being a stream fringe 12-team league guy versus a must roster. And then Dwight Powell, he continues to start, and he continues to just, I don't know, like just like sort of fart in your mouth. Like just enough where you, you get your attention. You go, well, what are you doing, Dwight? But then it's definitely not something you're interested in. And that's one of the worst analogies you'll ever hear. But that's sort of how I feel about what Dwight Powell's doing at the moment. He can be streamed. He's available in every league, basically. Um, but he's just not doing enough that gets us excited or interested. The Jazz and the Bucks. This is a back-to-back for Utah. So Mike Conley should return after sitting out on Saturday. Rudy Gobert. I'm recording this before uh, Saturday's game. Rudy Gobert, well, before the finish of it, I'm just about two minutes into that game, Gobert was going bananas with a bunch of rebounds against the Bulls. His blocks haven't been there this season. Now, that by the time you're listening to this, that might have been after Saturday's game, and he might have blocked seven shots. I don't know. They will come. Last season, he was um, slow out of the blocks as well with, with his with his swats. I don't think I've ever said swats like that before. But he will get better. Like, they don't need to panic there. Well, Don, Don Mitchell... He is, again, like, fine. Has he taken a step forward? I don't think so. Like, he's sort of fine. He's, he's very good. Much like Brandon Ingram, I guess, where you look at it and just go, what the hell do I say? Like, has he elevated? Yeah, not really. I feel like he's just sort of in that same spot that he has been for many, many years. For the Bucks, Chris Middleton, again, I feel like he is a bit stagnant as well. There's no explosive games. He's been a little bit down in, in some of his um, performances as well. He's just been okay, and and that's fine, right? But he just hasn't been like he's the 51st ranked player. That's fine. I think I had him in the 36 to 40-ish range, whatever. So he's a little bit behind that. He's not going at um, he's not going at his best at at this stage. 
And then Bobby Porter sat out on Saturday. Brooke Lopez and Drew Holiday won't play for the Bucks. Can Porter still play Saturday on a back-to-back? Will we see him play more than the 15 minutes he got in his season debut? Or as uh, Americans would say, debut? People always give Aussie shit for saying debut as debut. I don't know why. Anyway, that's just how we say it. Debut. Um, Bobby Portis will be there. Yeah, hopefully he pushes more minutes. I think he is a a fringe, yeah, a fringe 12-team league guy would be how I would uh, refer to Punch Bob at this point. But how I refer to McDonald's is the trusted community presence. Like everyone just knows where McDonald's is in their community. You all have a memory from some point in your life of going to Macca's. It's great that they are sponsoring this podcast and they've been proudly serving communities since 1965 and it's always been more than just a place to get tasty and affordable food. You've got their Wi-Fi that you can go and use. You can catch up after school, after sporting events, on your long road trip. Go pull in through the Macca's drive through and get yourself a pack of those nuggies. Get yourself... Um, does anyone like the hot apple pies? I used to hate them when I was a kid, but actually they're not too bad. So when you're looking for a place to re- refuel and reconnect, go to McDonald's. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm loving it. Yeah, I am. All right, let's go on to the next game we're going to take a look at here, and it is the Trailblazers and the Hornets. Damian Lillard was really good last game. Really good. Now, this doesn't change the fact that I was told that he's dealing with an abdominal issue, and it was quite significant, right? That doesn't change anything. This is why I said, look, just be aware of this. Don't necessarily buy low, but don't, don't trade him away panicking. I, I want Dame to be great. He was great last game. Let's see if he can do it again. Let's hope he can do it again. And then um, Yusuf Nurkic. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Now, Nurkic is frustrating for the following reason. He's the 71st ranked player. He's playing under 25 minutes a night, like Chauncey Billups. You do not have to play Cody Zeller. I, I, I absolutely assure you, you do not have to. And oh, maybe Nurkic can't handle the minutes. He played 29 on opening night. Like, he can play more than 25 minutes. I 100% assure you of that. He definitely can. And it's frustrating. He's averaging 13 and 12. He's not blocking shots at this point, Nurk, and that'll come. I think it's a buy low. People are annoyed at him. Maybe I'm just the only Nurkic believer still in the world. It's possible. Just give him minutes, man. Like, stop playing Cody Zeller. There's no need for it. And then for the Hornets, I want to watch the juniors. PJ Washington Jr. and Kelly Oubre Jr., how it works when the Hornets are back semi-full strength with Rogier returning. Where does Oubre fit? Washington and Plumlee. Plumlee barely played last game. Washington pushed up. I'm not super high on Washington's long-term prospects, but maybe a stream option. But how he works with Plumlee and how Oubre works with Rogier, I think he's going to be really telling. The Pistons and the Nets. It's a back-to-back for Detroit. Cade Cunningham debuted on Saturday. Debuted on Saturday. I don't know if he's going to play in the back-to-back, but I want to watch Jeremy Grant, who um, has been, I don't know, up and down, I guess. I wouldn't say Grant has been brilliant so far this this season. He's been all right, 105th ranked player before Saturday's game. I always, I did expect a drop-off from him from last season, but you know, probably can be a little bit better than that. And then Olenek, how does your mate, Dwayne Casey, who is saved by Jason Kidd from being the worst coach in the NBA... Luke Walton, maybe th- th- those. That's clearly the podium, though. How you want to have those three guys? Can he decide to use? Hey, look, let's just play Kelly Link twenty-seven minutes a night, twenty-six minutes a night, and not muck around with this other garbage that we're throwing out there. Well, for the Nets, Lamarcus Aldridge, good game, bad game, good game, bad game, good game last time. Will it be a shit one this time? I don't know. He's worth streaming in for sure, given how few games are on. But I'm not trusting it long term. Well, Jim Harden, the Jim Harden hand wringing about oh Josh. You told us he was a great pick in the first round. What a load of shit. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Well, he had 18 free throw attempts last game. And despite all of the shitness of Harden's start, guess where he's ranked? 18th. I wish I wish that my player who was sucking was the 18th ranked player. That's, you know, it's not, there is plenty of room for that to get, but that's better than picking when you pick Bradley Beal. Look, Beal's 26th at the moment. It's better than Jason Tatum, who's 39th. It's better than, can't think, but there's plenty of other guys he would have picked up top who, uh, and and Harden's had significant struggles. He's 18th while shooting 37% from the field. He's fine. He's fine. People hate him, and that's why you should have attacked with a buy low before that big game. Rockets and the Lakers, the crucifix, Christian Wood. I really always just want to focus on where his free throws are at. 
he's been solid enough. I don't think he's going to blow us away or anything like that. But as a as a solid solid option, which I think he's been like he's the forty second ranked player. You were picking him in the thirty five to fifty zone most likely, third to fourth round. He's giving you what you need. Nineteen and eleven. He's hitting seventy one percent from the line. Like he's been fine. Let's see if we get more of that. Well, Eric Gordon, he's had a couple of interesting scoring games. I really do not think that he is a must-roster 12-team league guy. He's 113th at the moment. That's coming with 14 points per game. But he's hitting 51% of his shots, and that's going to drop off. But let's, I'm, more important, I'm more interested in role and usage versus fluctuations in shooting percentages for guys at this point. Well, for the Lakers, Carmelo Anthony, another one in the uh, good game, shit game group, because last game he was excellent against the Cavs as they fought back. He has produced really good numbers so far. He's averaging 16 points with three threes and shooting the ball well. Now, he doesn't do anything else. Four rebounds, one assist, half a steal, half a block. So a combined two two assist steals and blocks. This is coming on 50% three-point shooting. So let me guarantee you one thing here. Yeah, if you want to do a what of Carmelo Anthony shooting 50% from three, I tell you, it's 0%. It is going to come down. And when that comes down, the field goal percentage drops from 49, maybe to 46. The three-pointers made go from 3.2, maybe to 2.2. The 15 points per game go to 12 points per game. And then you're looking at him and going, why is this dickhead on my 12-team league roster? Like, for sure, add him. Like, he's a great ad for Sunday. He's on a hot streak. I assure you, it will not continue. It cannot continue. He won't be a 50% three-point shooter. I also want to watch Anthony Davis, who we had worries about at the you know, last season. His free throws were bad. Um, in the preseason, they were bad. They're still not great, but they are improving a little bit, 74%. And he's the 21st ranked player, so still not there. But his blocks is really what I want to watch. He's focusing on that. Two and a half blocks per game. That was way up from where it was last season. So that is a super encouraging thing from Tone Davis. In terms of streamers for nine cat leagues, we're looking at the Shark, Bruce Brown. Royce O'Neal's always a streamer, never a hold. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, Dorian Finney-Smith, very similar to O'Neal. Kent Bazemore, Dwight Powell, George Hill, and Patrick Connaughton. In terms of deeper leagues, these guys rostered in under 10%. We've got Bazemore and Hilly, Nasir Little, Cody Zeller, Jordan Nwora, Mo Harkless, Alex Len, and Blake Griffin. And then we go to points leagues. Brown, Bruce Brown that is, O'Neal, Aldridge, Finney-Smith, Bazemore, Powell, Hill, and Connaughton. Oh, that's the wrong wrong button. I pushed the wrong one. My bad. That was uh, category leagues. Again. Let's go to points leagues one. Brown, Bruce Brown, Jalen Bronson, who should be rostered everywhere. Marcus Aldridge, Grayson Allen, Bobby Portis, Dorian Finney-Smith, Pat Connaughton, and Royce O'Neal. Now, guys, with a new and updated website, Bet Online, it's always been the place to go for football and basketball betting. Now it's even better. So go to that new updated interface and use our promo code LOCKEDON when you sign up, and you get a 50% match deposit on that first deposit. From basketball, football, the World Series, NHL, UFC, boxing, or even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the offers they have for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. And when you are making your bets at Bet Online, grab a built bar because these are delicious. They're great straight after a workout because they're a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Raspberry flavor, strawberry flavor, orange, coconut. Cookies and cream, mint brownie, plus all the special editions. Are they got a pumpkin spice one for Halloween? Surely they do. If they don't, Built Bar, take the idea and run it for next year. These are also healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. And you can get them for 15% off at Built.com. So head to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 to save 15% off Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. And I'm going to taste my ass right out of here. That is it for today's What to Watch For show. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back with a waiver wire show, a live pregame show at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, a what to watch for, and then a full recap of all of Sunday's action. Guys, follow, subscribe, thumbs it up, five-star reviews. You know what to do. We're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.